when I started working at the public libraries, I noticed that the fiction knowledge organization wasn't done almost at all. So that's why I, I became very interested in it and, and I started to do my PhD and, and some projects and I have been working on the subject almost all the, all the time of my career. Of course, due to the, my work, working career, I have done the past 20 years in, in academic libraries, so I have been not that active, but I have tried to follow up what's what's happening in this field all the time. And I start, uh, the aim of this lecture is to introduce the methods used in the knowledge organization of fictional materials, especially literary fiction. I'm not talking about arts and, and music, but quite a lot of these things that I will be discussing can be used also within those materials. But every every uh, different part of, of of art, fiction, and, and and music, they have all their own challenges, and they are very interesting subjects of this topic. So, if you are interested in that, that do continue because this is quite a big field, and there's quite a lot of both research and practical work work to be done. And and at the end of this lecture. If, if time allows, I'll be speaking something about creating and using information storage and search systems for fixtures materials. There has happened quite a lot during the past 20 years, especially during this millennium, due to the rapid rise of the internet and, 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 and the tools that we can use there. And at the present, I'm very much interested what can be done with the artificial intelligence tools within these fields. There has not been so much discussion about fiction and AI, but I'm sure that there will be tools, tools in the near future that will again revolutionize how we search and find fiction and other, other objects of art for us. And feel free to comment and ask questions. I just checked that I won't be seeing the, the the notes that you are writing, but I know that that Christina will tell me if if there's any answers or questions there. And I try to pause between every section so we can discuss a bit bit what I am saying and and if you have any questions about that. So the next idea is to uh, very, very briefly discuss the basic topics of information storage and research concepts. And, and especially, I will be speaking quite a lot of, about the effect of communication and information retrieval habits on information storage. This is especially important within fiction because the fictional communication is completely different. If we see, for example, how the people search for scientific documents and how they use them in their research, or even how they search, search documents and information for their everyday life. Of course, fiction is also search for every, everyday problems and solutions, but when we are speaking about finding fiction, there's, there's more than, than the normal, normal information search questions. First of all, the most important when you start to start to do knowledge organization is to decide what a document is. It, it has been uh, said that the document is a substance in entity formed by a data medium and the information stored in it. When I started my career, the books were printed once, but the internet has revolutionized this also. So at the present, you all know that we have 
printed books, digital books, books read by authors, books read by other other persons than authors. And then we have, have quite a lot of texts that are born and done in the internet that have completely their own own way of being a document. So this is the first challenge at the present that a document is is very very it's it's not easy to define what a document is and there have been created some tools to to manage this situation but i think this will be very interesting in the future especially when we see it from the point of point of how libraries especially try to manage different types of documents. So the document consists of physical storage medium and immaterial recorded information part. And both are important when we are speaking about about, uh, fiction. As you may know, the storage medium of a fictional work, especially if we think about about, for example, poetry is very important. How it is written, how it is printed, even how it is binded. So, so document in itself can be can be a form of art that is worth considering when starting to starting to index or classify them. So cataloging is identifying different aspects of the documents. I will be speaking later about what the aspects might be in in fiction. And usually the catalog is done in order to answer the user's questions regarding on certain topic works of by certain author or certain document. And in addition, the catalog must indicate whether the search document is available. At the present, almost all catalogs are, are digital ones and, and they are quite openly used. So this is a completely new tool that can be used in, in the modern environment. Content ex- description is a condensed description of the content of the document. And I have noticed that especially in fiction, this is very challenging because I did quite a lot of empirical research about how the readers speak about speak about the content of the fictional document and, and it's it's very varied and, and and even it has very subjective parts and 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 this I think is a chance that is how they say a devilish one. So you have to be very, very precise when when defining what the description, what the condensed description is in fiction, what you really want to describe, for whom and why. I'll be back in this this because the subjective part here is very important. Classification is systematic organization of interrelated contents, especially in fiction. Classification, I think, is very important tool because it's, it gives a tool for, for systematics of contents that are interrelated. And in fiction, it is sometimes very difficult to say, for example, by keywords or subject words, what this interrelated content is. But when we have a classification tool, we can use it in order to combine different types of documents as a one class. And that helps the reader reader again to find documents. Especially in poetry, this is, is very interesting. It's very hard to say what the topic of a poem is sometimes, but it is very useful sometimes to say that this works of poetry are similar, they form some kind of similar class and you should check this this book if you are interested in this one. Indexing is conduct description used subject words or keywords, especially useful this is in fiction when there are 
there are similar things as in fact that can be described in 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 words or keywords and in addition to that there have been several thesauri and word lists for fiction because there are quite a lot of topics and aspects in fictions that that need their own own wording and summary is a brief independent presentation of the content of the document and i think the summary is the tool we often do not think that that for example the uh, text at the cover of a book or at the back cover of the book is a summary but they actually in my point of view are summaries of the, what the book is about and they have been used used very very long time i remember from my very youth youth the back cover text and they were very important in those times when we were looking for books and at the present they are of course used in marketing so they use the text that are are known also the, to the uh, audience of the books and in addition they tell always something about the contents of the book and again at the present time when we are using digital databases this can be used as a tool when searching for fictional materials so here's a figure of this uh, this totality so we have this knowledge organization that is divided in cataloging and content description and content description is then divided to classification and indexing and this can be done by computers or by humans or by both and as i mentioned the upcoming artificial intelligence intelligence tools will probably change this quite a lot a lot because i know that especially within scientific documents these tools are already used and available but what makes it very interesting in fiction is that fiction has a element that is always subjective both for the author and the reader and i don't think that computers can ever do that but we will see what will happen in the future and this uh knowledge organization is part of the bigger task for for information organization that is called Bibli bibliographic control and it is the identification of all possible documents published in different media and as monographs or part of publications and the result is to have catalogs of these documents and works and make useful indexes and and the, as i mentioned earlier the definition of document availability at the present i think that this task is almost impossible due to the fact that there are so many so many documents being done in this digital world but on the other hand in this kind of environment it becomes more and more important to try to make bibliographic control tools and for example if we think about fiction we have different guides like national bibliographies that tell for example what books fictional books have been published in in finland or for, for example in your own country and then we have have topic types type of of databases that for example try to list all the science fiction books in the world or in europe or or in your or in my country so we are doing more and more this bibliographic control type of things in in smaller sections and in focused groups and this is something in our field that there's a lot of work to be done so if you are interested in this kind of work do think what you could do in 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 this this field so we will be going to the fiction information search have you any questions or comment about the basic things are, are they all clear to you
seems to be okay. Okay, then we go to the fiction information search. Um, I have divided them into three three parts, and and this is not based on 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 large research, but on on the papers and articles and books I've read, and and on the other hand, quite a long experience at the public libraries when I I worked at the reference reference desk. Uh, the most easiest one is this uh, people search like documentaries on a topic, for example, travel books, quite a lot of my clients when they travel to a foreign country, especially that they haven't visited, they wanted to have books on a place A. And then novels about divorce, about homosexuality, about about this very specific specific uh, aspects that have been discussed in a fictional works. And this is again very easy to answer in a in a with keywords or or subject words. Then the most challenging and I, I think the most important part is this one wants to find good book, books to read. And when I worked in a library, this was very difficult to answer. Of course, if you had a user that had had similar points of view as you and 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 read similar types of book, then it was very easy to recommend a book. But when you did know the didn't know the field, it was very difficult to tell. And that was one reason why I started to work very much on on this fictional uh, fictional. Uh, part of the books in our at our library then in order to help all the all the clients in our, our library at the present there are very very many tools in the internet i think you all have used internet bookstores and and they have statistical tools that can help the reader to find these good books to read and then one very important but a minor minor point is very specific needs. For example, literature research, the researchers of the literature, they have their own point of view when searching literature and, and, and they need completely different types of thesauri and word lists. And then we all know that fictional books are I used quite a lot of it, the study of history and the study, study of linguistics. And these all need to be addressed when one starts to starts to classify or, or give keywords to, to fictional books. So fact versus fiction. First of all, this divides this previously men mentioned this topic of a documentary or good book to read. And on the other hand, this divides the factual documents in the library and, and fictional documents at the library. So fact has connection to the real world. Fiction is per definite um, fictionality. So it is something that human beings and human human being author makes up, and of course this is this gives it a special tone when you start to think about fiction and what it means. Fact usually has very clear definition, especially in science. First thing, as we all know, is to make clear definitions when you start to speak about scientific things. In fiction, especially in in some for example, poetry and, and some parts of the of the prose, they are very open, fuzzy definition or even definitions that that want to be be 
be not definable. So this gives another challenge when, when starting to work with fiction. In fact, there are very clear references to other works. You can read the read the read the references from the reference list, and it is very clearly classified. Classified. It you can classify very easily. Fact book. If it's physics, it's physics, and that's it. In fiction, on the other hand, there are very open references to other works, even some subliminal references that the author really doesn't know, but he, he or she definitely has, has used. And it is very, very, very common in fiction to combine, combine classes and cross boundaries. For example, when I classify, classified several thousands of books, I noticed that almost every book could be placed in one or two classes. So this again is one challenge in, in, in fiction. So the very, very conclusion in, in, in here is that when we start to think about fiction and its content description, describe, describing contents of fiction is that we go to a world that they are very difficult things to define, they are very open and fuzzy things, and, and there are very lot of things that are interpretations. And these are something that you have to be very careful and you have to have to think these things when you start doing this in practice. On the other hand, when I started this thing, quite a lot of people said that you cannot do this or this is impossible. And I have always liked things that are impossible to do and you can always do something but you cannot do perfect perfect systems within fiction because fiction is something that that lives all the time and changes within history so what are the basic functions functions of fiction i have here some researchers definitions Petersen famous Danish person who started to do quite a lot of work in the indexing of fiction, said that the, the fiction tries to arouse certain moods in the readers, entertain, relax, excite. So there's something very, very specific in fiction that the book wants to, wants to, wants to rouse when we are reading it. So it's not just the contents, it's something more. And then, as I already mentioned, there's something very specific events, quantities and phenomena, characteristics, historic things, and things like that, and that, that are almost like in, in factual books, but on the other side, side, they are done in a fiction work. And, and in fiction, the author is always very subjective when telling. So you have to bear in mind that in fiction, when a story is told, it cannot be defined as a truth as in, 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 in factual books in the same way. It's always fiction. And that's a very important thing to remember, too. Plotman, famous famous uh, structuralist i think he lived in estland uh, has defined so so there's interaction between sender and receiver so it's very traditional communication the author wants to tell a story and wants someone to read it and in fiction this is very important. This interaction between audience and cultural tradition. A fictional work is always part of some traditional traditions in in one one's own language and culture, but at the present more and more in the global culture and, and in global global tradition. And then we go to the subjective part when we are reading a book of fiction. We are always doing something with, with our own person. 
we start to understand one's own own self or or we start to think things in a different manner or or the text opens different doors so it's it's very subjective when we are reading a book and at the same time we do the interaction with the text we enjoy the text and and we find in the text different things when we are reading a book and and what is very strange is that there's also interaction between the text and cultural context a book uh, changing from a mediator to a source and recipient of information and and this is this is something that i have been thinking thinking is very very peculiar and and very specific to the fiction for example if we think about novels published in 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 europe from the 18th century to to the present time for example if we read books of your own culture from the 1960s and 1980s at the present times the contents have somehow changed to another one and it it is because of this this interaction because between the text and the cultural context the content of the fictional book changes all the time so this of course leads to the fact that if you are starting to do fictional content description, content analysis, it's a work that will never stop. It should be done. Also, the older book should be should be uh, done again and again. And, and for example, if you think about the present discussion about, about the, the uh, social topics, for example, women's rights or or rights of the different groups. They have changed so much that at the present we discuss about these works of fiction in a different manner than we did in the past history. And this is something that I'm very interested in and, and I like in, in this kind of work. And then uh, this is a Finnish uh, researcher who has defined basic function of fictions that there's informative function, emotional function, cognitive function, thematic function, and artistic function. And when we are starting to think about the topics and things within a book, these all play a role. Uh, I, don't, I, I think this cognitive function here is a new one. For example, I have used fiction also as a textbook when trying to learn, learn another language. So this cognitive function can be very, very much like in using textbooks or, or, or school books. So here's my, my picture of this total mess, if you want to say so, or this very, very complex, complex situation when we start to discuss or think about, think about fictional works and how they should be managed, managed when we, we start to think about indexing or, or classification on, on them. So we have this author and recipient who are bo both as important might be that the recipient is even more important here because there are more of the recipients but of course the author is the one that does the book and then we have this book as a material artifact as an aesthetic object and then there are several goals between there between author and the work and even during the history of the author, these codes might might change. And the same here in readers. For example, I challenge you, if you don't believe me, take a book from the Soviet Union era, a fictional book, read it now, and, and check how the code 
how we interpret and how the things were told there have changed and and based on what historical events and it is the same in the books of your own country take any book from the beginning of of the previous century for example read it and and i think about these codes how they have changed and this is an ongoing process so so these change all the time i'm starting to be quite old and i have a habit to re re read some books almost once in a year and it's very interesting to notice how the contents of the book seem to be changing but especially how i am changing as a reader and as an interpreter of the work and then some words about the about the structure structural elements of the narrative these are some of these are very important to all readers but they start to be also very important when we speak about fiction indexing and, and classification as a tool for fiction research research and and i think we have not done enough in 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 this ways we try to do quite a lot of in the topic in the general things but when we go to the structural elements of the narrative we do not do quite a lot of indexing indexing there so we have story and it it has quite a lot of things in it actions existence people people and and things they are to familiar to persons in there and these are quite easy to to index or, or catalog it's very easy to say that for example all the persons in the book are finished persons from 1960s or something like that and then this discourse that of of course is is very very or even most interesting in fiction tells how the story is actually told how the author uses these integrants in in his or her books and then especially at the present the actualization is very important in databases at the present it is very very common that when a book is published then we make a play it and a movie and 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 even different versions of the same book so so we have this matter of expression that is also very varied in in fiction and if we take a very broad view here there's of course research done on this book and 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 even maybe paintings done based on the book this book so this network network of discourses expressions become very varied and, and and very interesting so this has led when we discuss about fictional classification to the fact that that if we use the traditional classification systems they are too narrow and too one sided and quite a lot of the classification systems that have been provided for fiction have thus this uh, structure where there's not just one class but it is divided divided in in different categories within the within the fiction in 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 normal fiction categories uh, classification systems this is us usually done with for example in in dewey in 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 specific numbers that are or subclasses that are added but then we have special fictional classification systems that include classification for each of these these parts of the parts of this analyzed systems and i think it's uh, if we look this this structure or this structure we could 
make a classification for each of these subsystems here, or then we can make a classification system that try, tries to manage manage the whole system. And, and I think it is better to try to focus on one one part of this instead of trying to make a very, very complete whole system. It becomes too complicated. So, for example, sorry. For example, if you your users need to know about the accessibility of the book, is it easy reader or is it difficult to read? Is it how how is physical character? It's does it have big font or? or small font, even how heavy the book is and, and the literary form. You can make a specific classification for this. And, and, and for example, we used in our, our library, and I, I know that quite a lot of libraries use specific systems to show this. And of course, these are very easy to tell in, in when using keywords or, or, or other that type of content description systems. And Anderson and Holtz, they have the same kind of things, but then there's this very interesting part, in addition to the previous one, is the author's intention. And this is something that has been discussed a long time. What is author's intention and can we actually know it? And can we know it from the book? Or should we go to the author and ask him or her what they have meant when saying this? Or is the reader's experience, the reader's interpretation, better one? And, and this is something that I think personally is they both are right. And this makes it very interesting when we are discussing about fiction. And one can even say, based on discussion on some works of literature and, and letters and, and and that type of things that sometimes the author may not really understand what they have written or, or what they mean in a book. And again, this is because because there is this cultural tradition and, and cultural 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 uh, interpretations of the works works when it is published. So this is very, very open to interpretation, especially if we start to speak about what is the message of a, of a book. But again, this is something that the people, people who want to search for fiction are trying to find out. And is there any questions so far? No, there seems not, so I will continue. Uh, uh, then I will speak something about the aboutness of fictional materials. Aboutness is a term used in information science science when we speak about about what a book or what the work is about and there's quite a lot of discussion about the aboutness of different types of documents i will here speak only about fiction and as i mentioned the aboutness what the fiction is about is very difficult and very specific question uh, if you have a novel in your hand and something, someone asks what is it is about, if it's about very, very specific thing, it's easier to say, for example, it tells a story of a person who goes to a, this country and finds there some person and, and, and they start to do this and this. But if it's, it's more, more abstract work, it's very difficult to say what, what it really is about. And then you usually start to speak about 
Well, it's something like like he or she wrote, and it's it's very similar to this book that I read. So you start to speak about aboutness in a uh, language that uses these these cultural references to other works or or even other arts. And and again, this is very important when we start to start to do information systems to fiction. There has to be a tool how to how to uh, show show these kind of connections between works. And again, in this type of environment that we are living in, in computer environment, it's actually very easy to do. I will show some examples a bit later. So, how facet of fiction, what kind of fiction, structure, narration, this is more about the aesthetics. The what facet was this very, very specific subject. For example, racing cars, this is a romantic story about racing cars. And the aspect of literary history, and this is very important sub part of this aboutness, but it, this actually connects the work to the history of literature, and again, it tells what is the part of this work in the in the history of liter literary. Then we have Nielsen, his Danish researcher. He he has divided this aboutness aboutnesses of fictional matters to these uh, things. General subject, general and literary type, and and this is at the present the most used starting point point in in especially in classification of fiction. So we start to speak about genre or literary type. Is it a novel or is it poetry? Is it a science fiction or is it romantic novel or or is it is it war war novel or whatever? And and I think this is the personally also I think this is the very basis where you can start building these these tools for for fiction search and retri retrieval. And then Nielsen, he's a, a literary researcher, so he has very very or he has a lot of this how how a fiction works type of aboutness is narrative structure plot how the story is told the narrator's way of telling this is very important in in in, in some subgenres points of view style mode of telling function of the setting and 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 patterns of imaginary leading motif symbolism so this this from this narrative structure to this patterns of imaginary, they are very, very much uh, within the fiction and how the fiction is done. And I think this is for literature researchers, but on the other hand, some readers are also interested interested how these are done in a novel, for example, especially in a novel, of course, in poetry. And I haven't seen very much this used in, in, in systems for fiction. So there's definitely a lot of work to be done. And then these literary history things that we talk quite a lot, but these are quite much, much used in, in especially in indexing literature at the present. And this was very interesting. This, there are Indian researchers, researchers, and and they have defined the basic categories of content description of fictional documents as follows. So, subject: what is it about? Function: what is it for? The European researchers do not use this function very much. I, I think it is it's it's a bit forbidden to speak about the function of the book. But I think this 
again, it's very important thing. For example, when you are looking a book for recreation, it's very nice to know that, okay, this book, book function is that you just want some easy reading and that's it. Again, quite a lot of books are used in schools, for example, as, as readers. So again, there's a function that might be used when describing fiction. And I, I think this is some, some kind of blind spot here when we are speaking about uh, fiction contents, that books also have some function. And, and this is something for you to think about when you try to find books for you yourself. Is there some function be behind that? Why are you selecting the books that you are, are selecting? And medium, again, very important at the present because we have quite a lot of different types of forms to publish works. Organization and the elements of the work of art, we discussed this a bit earlier, and the style. And another thing that, that has not been openly spoken in, in, in the Western research, especially at the beginning of this, is the judgment, how good a book is. And this has been, in my experience, a bit difficult thing, especially at the libraries, when we are taught that you shouldn't give very strict judgment on a book. But when we look, for example, uh, the internet bookstores or, or things like that, or when we think about how we discuss the fictional works that we are reading, we usually give judgment. So we we say it is a is it it is a good book or is it a, it is a bad book, and I think when and if libraries start to use it, it's very diff, very very important to define how you judge these things in 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 internet bookstores and 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 uh, and also in some libraries library databases. This can be solved in a manner that you take along statistics. So for example, if you have 10,000 readers who say that book is good, good, it's, it's very likely that it is good, but always ask for whom and why it is good. So the judgment is always very subjective, but it is something that people definitely want to know when they are selecting a book of uh, fiction for themselves. So, the very, very specific problems of fictional materials. First and most important, as I have always mentioned, is that meanings are formed through the subjective integration of the reader experience. So there is no one, one interpretation, no one truth about book. There are several. And of course, this means when we start to make make uh, information systems for fiction, uh, this is my opinion, we have to open them also to this subjective in interpretation. So there has to be a place where different readers tell their opinion about the book. This again is a somewhat topic that has been discussed within libraries, especially in Finland, which I know whether some are very, very strict in here that the subjective things does, do not belong in libraries and, and some have already opened their database in some manner, manner to the users. Another thing is that art is always a national in institution. If I read a Finnish book, I read it in a completely different different situation than, for example, when you are reading a Finnish book. And again, if I read, read a Czech book, it's completely different interpretation what you are doing. It is based, on the other hand, that literature is very, very important when building a nation. And, and we are taught, we, are, we learn our language by reading national 
uh, literature in our mother language, whether it is translated or not. And that makes it very difficult to, to create uh, information system that, that are suitable for all nations. And actually, I have been thinking that this would be a very, very interesting empirical research topic. How do you interpret a book of fiction from another, another culture? And there's been some, some research done in that, and, and the results are very, very interesting. So the meanings of art are also formed as a national proce process. And art is always associated with aesthetic and cultural values. So there are some things that are very, very difficult to define. For example, when I'm reading Finnish books, I have quite long background and I, I can say something about these aesthetics, aesthetics and cultural values. But for example, a, a very beginner reader, reader, it is very difficult to say something about that. And, and this, that's also a pedagogic issues here, here when we start to discuss about, about books and their contents. And some of the meanings are very unique to East subculture, for example, in music, also in literature. Literature, there, there are some internet uh, information systems that are very interesting to, to study based on this, this fact that even the language there is very, very unique to the subculture. One good example, an older one is, for example, the United States hip hop culture. It, it has very, very typical language within it, how they discuss about the music and, 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 and the records published. And the most important thing, they are valuing prejudice, prejudices associated with the content description of art. So there still are persons who think that this is something that especially libraries should not do. And on the other hand, it is very based to say that it is very, very challenging to say what, for example, the topic of a book is. And as I mentioned, these things also change during the history. So personally, I think this does not mean that you shouldn't do anything, but this means that you have to be very, very careful and, and, and think about the topic when you start doing these things. And, and you have to be very open to different interpretations. And as I mentioned already, when you start doing content description of fiction, fiction or, or art, it is always something that must be done in a, in a, in a group with, with a group of people and, and if possible, different types of people. And of course, this is something that is impossible to do within the libraries because there are other things defining where we can use our, our time at the libraries. And I think this is some something that has meant that the internet tools have become very important. Okay, now I skip to the classification schemes for fiction. And Bechtel started to study this in 1980s and her analysis of these classification schemes is still very valid. So this started from adaptation of general nonfiction system. For example, if you had Dewey or something like that, we started to adapt them in, in, in libraries for, for fiction. Usually, usually started with some general identification. For example, started you used additional numbers for different types of genre. And then there, there is, and, and this is, I think, very, very big thing in internet, internet tools. 
system for single, single turn or for example science fiction, science fiction or or even even genre within fiction for example harry potter is something that is very interesting to check in the internet what types of information systems have grown there and then systems for all fictional works these are not so so popular because libraries usually depend on on general non-fiction systems and when you start to create a system for all fictional works it's very difficult to fit it in inside the system that's already been used but there are some of these and 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 for example i tried to do one of these and but but it was very very time consuming and Bechtel defines the core categories of content description character events spaces and times and 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 she said that that when starting to build a fiction classification scheme scheme you should use these different uh, categories within the classification system i changed my think thinking quite early that this can be actually better managed by by indexing of fiction if you start to use this in in, in classification schemes the classification schemes become too complicated Personally, I think the classification scheme of fiction should be very, very broad, in a manner of speaking. And usually, it is the genre-based seem to work very good. But when you start to divide the subcategories below that, the fact that this is so interpretational and and there are so many topics, it it means that it becomes very fuzzy and, and they are not working well. So personally, I think both classification and indexing have their they own, own uses and they should be used at the same time. And I think it, this was very important, this, this uh, notion of Bechtel, that the way users understand fiction can be modeled within the information system. And I think this revolutionized the thinking of, of information systems in 1980s and 1990s. And, and of course, at the present, this is, this is a common fact that you cannot make an information system without understanding the users. And this uh, third notion that systems must be able to describe, describe ambiguous, fuzzy and cross the boundaries categories was a vision, vision at that time, but at the present it is, it is uh, used in all, all the systems for fiction, fiction especially in the internet and uh, and again the computer systems have given us tools to manage this time of this type type of fuzziness and ambiguous okay i think we can skip this one and go to the examples of the classifications so this is the very basic of the universal classification scheme. So we have we have this basic class of English and old literature due from Dewey, and it is divided on the main main categories of fiction. And there's some some type of even genre type of uh, classification here here humor and satire. And, and I think this is very much used at the present. But as I mentioned, this general classic version of fiction, it started, I, I think, in early 70s, 1970s, 1980s. And, and this, this was used in quite a lot of libraries as a tool for self-classification self -classification of fiction, fiction in, a, in larger stocks. 
and and this this started as as experimentation but for example in finland it is almost all the public libraries use some kind of general classification of fiction in their collection and it depends quite a lot of on their collections yes uh, spillers uh, self classification and and i think this shows the brick is uh, the uh, main challenge in in classification is that when there are specific genres that are very easy to define then you can use these genres and and as spiller said they are use, usually recreational ones or have been labeled as such but then there is this other books so called serious books how one classifies them and and this seems a bit funny at the present so classics modern classics again thing that changes all the time significant who is significant can who defines it translation is okay okay but again who needs that fact and 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 here's this serious well short stories easy one but this tells quite a lot also about the prejudices in in classification of fiction so the genre is easy but the other other part of the fiction is very difficult to classify i tried to uh, answer this this question by dividing this so called serious fiction also to genre type of of classics so so we have psychological fiction and 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 social fiction and and things like that and it seemed to work quite all good in this this quite small library in in, in at Lotte where we started to do the to our our tests so the title title number was only 6000 it was quite a large work we classified classified all these books but but it seems that the genre classification works both at the self classification and especially at the internet and i think it's very very important that you should avoid these types of of classes but try to find real classes classes of of fiction and if you don't want then use this broad class that that is better than when very 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 uh, interpretational class that can be can be discussed that for example if we start to work who is significant author in finland at the present we we get very very varied results and and definitely no no real class for that and there's some some fictional categories this was quite a lot of used used in libraries and i think still is in, in self class and and this uh picture type of class class names are also used quite a lot of in internet internet databases if you are checking them So any questions so far? Are you still awake? Okay, I'll go through some things about indexing of fiction and 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 then we can discuss a bit at the end of the lecture. So again, uh when we start to index give keywords or subject keywords to fiction uh it is usually divided on these two levels denotative and connotative denotative level is very easy persons milieu factual aspects of the plot and these are these can be even done with the very very basic 
necessary or worthless at the present. But then when we go to the connotative, that is imaginative level, we need specific keywords for the indexing. And, and this has meant that the, there has been done quite a lot of work within the fictional indexing systems. And of course, at the present, when we have these uh, new types of tools for, for indexing different types, for example, the back cover text, as I mentioned, or even the whole text of novel, we can do different kinds of indexes based on, on, on any text that is available from the book. I have even see, seen some, some tools from the book cover indexing, and I think there is something that the new tools of, of, uh, of the artificial in, in, in the liquid, intelligence will give us in the, even in the near future, even at the present. And factual meanings are objective. If the book tells about cars, you can discuss very much. But when we go to expressive meanings, they are subjective. And again, when we are speaking about indexing, when it starts to become more and more subjective, then it starts to become the question, who does the indexing? The objective indexing can even be made by computers, but but when we go to the subjective part, I think there is needed several persons when we are speaking about the broad meaning of the of the work of art or 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 book. So I think this is the same. Uh, oh, oh yes, this is uh, Green. I think she was British uh, researcher, and and she opened the discussion about indexing describing attributes. So there are quite a lot of things around the book that is not about the content, but how and what the book is. For example, language, recency, when it has been published, auto affiliation, intended audience, for example, uh, what literacy prices it has won and things like that. So. There's quite a lot of these cultural, historical, and, and social things within within the books that all can also be uh, indexed. And then about work-specific indexing. Indexing. I don't think if you have noticed, but there are several work-specific indexes. For example. Classific novels, novels they have indexes at the at the end of the book, and and these are usually made for educational purposes. For example, if one tries to uh, understand works of Shakespeare, there are quite a lot of things in in his books that we don't understand at the present, at the language level, at the happening level, but also Shakespeare is Shakespeare is good example of a author whose works have affected so many works. So you can even make an index within a work of uh, Shakespeare that uh, gives you hints on what books, what works his works have influenced it. So this becomes like a network of networks if you do this work-specific indexes. And uh, subject headings, uh, the work on subject headings started in a similar fashion like as the classification. So 
we started to make word lists or supplementary word lists to existing subject heading lists. For example, one of the very first one was the Library of Congress complementary vocabulary. Now it is integrated there. And, and then I think in 1980s, 1919, started the serious work on specific subject head headings and SRE work for fiction. And here I collected this, this when I made my PhD. So there was, this is Swedish one. And again, here are the facets, facet based, based uh, structure used. And, and this one uses frame, persons, and topic. And they are divided into sub facets, time, space. And, and the persons here are even divided to sub subclassics. So when you start to make a thesaurus for, for fiction, it usually becomes very comp complex because there are different topics that should be should be taken into consideration. This is the one that I was making in, I think it was in 1990s and in, in, in at the beginning of this, this millennium at the beginning of 2000, and, and we used this uh, facet type, so we had this genres, then subject, motive, themes, actors, milieu, and, and event time, and then these other, other terms, as I mentioned, typographical and technical terms. And these can be found in internet, and we made an ontologized version from it in, in, I think the work started in, in 2000 or something like that. And these are available in the internet. I won't be showing them to you, but if you want to check out how a fictional thesaurus and especially on the lot sized looks like, you can go to these addresses, addresses and check, check how they look. And here are some examples of the fiction. As I mentioned, the indexing must be very, very concise, concise very summarized, not too long. I did an uh, empirical research and I, I, uh, I asked, I think it was about 30 persons to index same novels and the amount of, of the uh, keywords used by all these persons, it was always like 30 or 50 or something like that. And, and, and it was very messy and very, very, very even subjective. But it was very interesting when I did uh, stati statistical uh, analysis on it, that that from all of these, these uh, different words, there they started to, something started to come up once or twice or even five, five times. And, and they started to actually form these kind of indexes by most used words per each work. So genre is very important. The persons are very important. And what is what the book is are about them, about the basic basic themes, they are very important. And usually these tell quite a lot of about the, what the book is. And again, if you are using uh, summaries, you, you could easily in the present situation write this as a summary. This is a social novel about Maoris and Aborigines in New Zealand 1990s. It tells, tells about their life in, power, power, in slum poverty and about young people in gangs. And actually, this could be even used, used within the system, and this could be indexed in, in these kind of uh, search terms. So at the present, I think it would be more important to see how you could tell these concise stories and how they, they could be divided into indexes within the systems. And 
tell some words before I stop about how it looks at the present. Uh, the internet has started this so-called folksonomy movement, and it means that all who are using the information system can do indexing or any describing it within the system. And it answers in an open man manner to the aboutness and topicality of fiction. As I mentioned, if it's one person or even the librarians or, or whoever who do this very controlled way, it leaves out, leaves out some aspects that are very, very important to the people who are actually using, using, using and, and reading these things. And again, the challenge is how to have this both within the systems. And as I mentioned, what is happening at the present is automatic indexing based on digital texts is happening. Uh, I think it is Norway that's, that has, has uh, quite a lot of digital fictional uh, books because they have quite a lot of money money in that country due to their oil resources. And they have done quite a, quite interesting things about automatic indexing based on digital text of novels. You can go to the Norwegian National Library and check, check what's happening then. And very important tool that I think is used also in libraries, but especially in internet bookstores and things like that, is this user statistic enhancement. When we have a lot of people buying or reading books and, and commenting them and using them, we can we can make statistic evaluation and and and, and based on these statistics, we can, for example, say quite clearly that this book interests quite a lot of people. So perhaps it is very good book because quite a lot of people have loaned it from the book or, or buy it from our store. As I mentioned, the AI tools are developing. We really don't see at the present what will be the future here, especially due to the nature that the fiction is very much about persons and one person and his or her interpretation. But this is something that I will be looking forward in the next 10 years. Will there happen, happen really something drastic or, or is it just a promise that that won't be fulfilled? And this user indexing and annotation, annotation as I mentioned, it is it is the most important topic at the present. How and with what tools do we open, whether it's library or internet bookstore or whatever, how can we use a broader base of our users in, in doing these kind of things? So very briefly, when you start to create a content description system, the most important is the user analyze what are the users or for which user base it, it, is it created. Then environment, environment and analysis what kind of operating environment it will be created in. Usually at the present it's internet environment, but even there you have to do some calculation and, 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 and analysis what can be done at the present and, and, and what will be done with it. Function analysis, again, what is the purpose of the system? Is there some general uh, purpose on it? Or is it for some, some special clients, for example, or special, specific part of the users or even authors? And then data analysis, what kind of data is described by the system? At the present, we can, we can do quite a lot of different types of data. So this is very important to do in a, in a very profound way. And of course, the project plan and who will do and especially who will pay the costs. And, and the most important thing is the cost benefit analysis. Is it worth building the system and, and on what con conditions? As I mentioned, I have been 
working with a couple of systems and, and usually it works that when you get a big company or big library behind it, then it works. But if you try to do something for yourself, self with a sweet small resources and especially just a couple of people, it won't last long. It's fun when you do it, but but uh, it won't be very effective. I won't be speaking about that. Then just some examples. For example, when we look, you can go to the internet and check these pages for yourself. Self, self. I have been using this amazing as a. This is not an advertisement, advertisement, but amazing fiction uh, shop actually has quite a lot of tools. And and uh, after this lecture, I would like you to go to the. Go to the Amazon, or if you don't like Amazon, to a similar bookstore and, and to one library and, and check what the tools that I have been describing are being used in these systems. For example, with a brief, brief, brief view, we can see it is important for people what is new. It is important for people the genres of the book. It's important for people, the book covers, the genres again, then it's very in important, the format, as has been mentioned earlier, it's very important who has done the book, the book series, series languages, and here yeah, the reviews, is the book good, how many persons have said, if 150,000 people 70% of them, about 100,000 people have said that it's a very good book. It's most likely that if you like this genre, the book is good. And then here are the readers uh, part of the, of, the, of the analysis. So they are writing why it is good. So it's very, very multifaceted different tools are used, used, analytical tools provided by the computers are used, and, and, and it's, it's also good look, looking, you can see the things that you want. And as I mentioned, one very interesting thing is this net fan pages. These are even, even uh, tools that, that, that provide a tool for writing new fiction fan fiction, some of you might be might be familiar with it. I've, I've been using Harry Potter, I, I know there's some discussion at the present present about the author of this book, but but uh, I think these are, why these are good examples is that there are so many readers and it, these are very big communities, but uh, you can find this type of pages from almost all the big authors or, or basic genres or subgenres, and again, for example, from musical genres, uh, art genres or whatever. And again, I ask you to go this, to this type of pages and analyze them based on the things that I have been speaking. So the aim here is, is that we have this fictional work, then we have these catalogs and indexes, we have data about authors, we have data about cultural history context, and then we have data about reception of readers. And when we have all these within one system or like in, in, in internet connected between different systems, we have this broad search and retrieval system for for, for fiction, and there already is examples of, of this type of things starting to be created. And if you really want to read quite a lot of references, there's the list for you. And I think that's what I wanted to speak about. If you have any questions or comments, we still have about 10 minutes left.